Hey, what up guys? So in today's video, I want to show you how to make an IP grabber um, and sort of a how to save it to a file. Now, the reason you would like to know this or it's good to know this is because it teaches you how to save to files, it tells you how to save outputs to files, and it teaches you additional stuff and it teaches you how to get requests from websites. Now, this is obviously good because then you can, as soon as you write this code, you can always use it for another stuff, right? So it's not... It's not like you write this code and you can't use it anymore. Actually, programmers are what they do is usually they write a program and they just copy bits off. And that's how you program as well sometimes. <laughs> um, so, about myself, um, I've been a programmer sort of for a couple of years now. I've been writing programs in many, many different languages. Um, HTML does sort of coding websites as well, but HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript, and I've really, really wrote a lot of websites because in high school it was sort of mandatory to write websites, lots of websites, um, and in my programming side it was like Lua, Python and C Sharp. Now if you ever used Visual Basic and you've used C Sharp, uh, I feel sorry for you, I feel sorry for myself. Why? Because it's the shittiest program ever made. Now why is it shitty? Well it's shitty because it's, it literally get glitches out of nowhere, it doesn't explain things right, like how to fix a problem. And then you stuck it there, and the thing is, like, a program's work, right? Work, for example, they work on Monday, you save the program, come back on Wednesday, and it doesn't fucking work. Now, I have no idea why this stuff happens, because it never happens in Studio Code. If I save a program, I get it the same day, no matter if I don't have power, I don't know what could happen, it could be a fucking storm outside my house, the program will be in the same state as it was as I left it, and it'll work. I don't know why, but Visual Studio Basic, right, it was the worst program I ever used. I will never use it again. I swear to God, I will uh, just never, right? So, so that's why we're using Visual Studio Code as well, because it's one of the best programs ever made. I love it, and it's very good. And so basically, um, I before we start, we need to collect some packages. Now we sort of don't need to, and sort of we do. So basically we go to CMD. Now if you've installed Python, make sure you have installed, I explained in my previous videos, um, shell or something like that. It's basically, I'll try and actually show you. I should be in the, I should be able maybe to I have Python. I don't think I have Python. I do, okay. I'll, sh I'll try and show you. So for you it'll be installed. For me it's modified because I already have installed Python, right? So basically what we want to do is make sure you have pip installed. Make sure you have uh, IDO installed and Python test suite as well. Next. Make sure this is important. You have this what I have. Make sure you everything I have you have installed, right? Make sure you do. Uh, yes, I want to cancel for you. It will be just progress, right? Okay. So let me just close this because of the video. Okay, so um, as soon as you've installed this, I you just need to install two packages. Now, I'm not sure if it's two or one. Let me just check. So to install stuff, it'll be pip install request. Now, I don't think we need pip install request, do we? Yeah, we do. Okay, so you need to download pip install requests, right? This is the one package we need. And now to, we need another uh, package, which is pip install pi installer. Now, pi installer is optional. If you don't install pi installer, what it does basically, it changes files, basically a program, Visual Studio Code program to a, an actual exe file, executable in Windows, right? That's what it does. So it's up to you if you want to just keep it like a sort of in code and you can only run in Visual Studio Code or other programs that are developed for, uh, sorry, for developing code or you can actually make an exe out of it, right? I'll show you how to make an exe as well. So all you need to do is just pip install py installer as, you, as soon as you've installed it. I have access to your computer now and you've been hacked. No, I'm joking, obviously. So, as you can see, um, you can also update pip. I'm going to do that just now. Don't take long. Just run this command while I'm doing, and I should update pip. Obviously, if you have pip installed, just freshly, you don't need to do anything. Just let this run for a second. There we go. Short tea break. I love tea. Do you guys drink tea? Like, mint tea with sugar is the best. I love mint tea with sugar. Uh, sorry, mint pure green green mint tea right that's the best tea i ever had 
I can drink it to do a die, right? So let's get started, right? Because this is a programming video, not a fucking tea video. However, I might make a video about teas. I love tea, right? So first thing we need to do is import the actual libraries, whatever you want to call it, dependencies, import requests as rec and import. Now, so basically I just copied the text, right? Be, uh, code, sorry, because there's no point me showing you how to write this because I'm just going to make a mistake and it's not going to work and I'm going to be that so basically all you do is just as soon as you type this i will leave in the description as well you do python file and that this is not going to work apart it might just display our ip address yeah as you can see it displayed the ip address um which is okay only thing is this is oh yeah, it's my ip address okay sorry <laughs> yeah so as you can see there's a problem um, db ip grab there's a file no such file or directory now this is why i love azure uh, visual studio code as well because it shows you what the problems are now obviously because we've not created as such a directory right it's not going to work so what we need to do is create a directory so what we need to do is just create a new folder create what well, name it whatever you want i'm going to name it python tutorials or just name it python actually right put the actual file in it because save the file first put it i don't know somewhere open the file and now because now either you can leave it as it is you can save it in this file which you can but i'm gonna obviously because i like uh, i like my stuff sort of um id i'm just gonna make a new folder i'm gonna name it db let's call it database because it's a database and as soon as i have a database what you can do is run it again and then really good so this is not working now if you stop oh sorry i need to open it because i've moved the file i need to open again open file i go to desktop if i go to python ip grab and i run the program again there should no be no problems as you can see as you can see this is my ip address and ip grab save to db right you can obviously change this and stuff right but i'll just show you what it does now so as you as soon as you go to db ip grab as you can see it says logging started and it shows you ip address now how do how does it actually get IP? Because even if you go IP config, I'll show you IP config all, right? This is your local IP address. It doesn't actually display the IP address. So what it does, so how does it get it? So basically how it does, it basically goes on Amazon because Amazon is a special service. I like Amazon. Uh, actually, let me copy the link. Because, right, so if you take this IP address, right? Uh, sorry, the fuck? Well, it is an IP address, right? I was, I wasn't wrong this time. It is an IP address, it's just in... DNS. Uh, so basically, you take this DNS address or link, whatever you want to call it, and put it in your web uh, browser. It sends you to this website and it displays your public IP address. So, anyways, so this is basically what it does, right? Um, I'll explain. So basically, this is the import. This is just imports the dependencies and libraries. So this is nothing that too important for me to explain. URL, URL string. This is the actual IP. Um, Website address. I sorry, I'm getting mixed up. No, I'm not really getting mixed up. I'm saying the truth. I'm just saying the wrong things, and you guys might not understand what the fuck I'm on about. Because DNS is technically an IP address now, because DNS how it works, it translates IP addresses to text, and it translates text to IP addresses. For example, request equals request get URL IP string request text print IP address. Now, what does this mean? Basically, request a request the IP address. Request get URL. Gets the URL. Sorry, gets the website link, so it goes to that website. The actual Amazon IP address, check. IP equals string request text, request text of that website. And because there's only one text, it's very easy to divide everything together. Every file. Divide everything from other stuff, right? And it prints the IP address in the console. And file path, now we get a file path because you should always determine the file path usually above right so there's no problems now you can change the file path as i said right hopefully you know how to change it no, i'm going to show you so basically if you don't want to you can name this folder this is the folder you can name this folder whatever you want and now you can name this file whatever the fuck you want make sure that obviously you change this as well because it's not going to work so this with open open the file write this just writes the file right Writes login started, writes the IP address, closes the file, make sure you close it because it can harm your RAM and then my UPC might be slow. And print, this is the, this is what prints the terminal console. 
IP grab safe to DV. And that's it, right? I just I will run it again, I'll show you. As you can see, it should yeah, as you can see the same IP address obviously. Um and there we go, that's it. So every time you run this program, you can obviously change this program. There's a lot of stuff you can do. For example, you can do that every 20 minutes, the program updates itself and then sends a new request. It's not really difficult to do. All you need to do is just make a function within the program and just do a timer that every 20 minutes or whatever time you want, it basically hits that uh, function again. And that's it. Basically, as I said, it should not maybe take you longer than 15 minutes to do. I love programming. Python's very easy as well. It's a, the, one of my favorite programming languages. I want to learn C++. C++ is actually a dependency of Python. No, sorry. C++, no, Python is sort of based on C++. There we go. That's what I wanted to say. Sorry. I'm getting mixed up. I don't know. Sometimes I, I know what I want to say, but then I don't know what I want to say, right? That's, that doesn't make sense. I know. I don't make sense. Uh, so, um, that's it, to be honest. Now, sorry, I wanted to show you PyInstall. So, PyInstall, now I've had some problem with PyInstall. Let's see if I can run this PyInstall properly. So, what to do with PyInstall? Let me just check. Now, how do we change this program? Sorry, how do we change this code file into our program? I'll show you. Now, I'm not sure, I've not tested, I'm pretty sure that Obviously, for this program to work, it needs to be the packages needs to be installed. So, if you want to make a sort of a virus on other people's computers, no, I'm not telling you how to commit crimes. I'm just telling you the truth. And um, if you probably want to create this so it runs on other computers, you need to download pip or download the packages, right? So the packages. So you're gonna have to make a program that as soon as you run it, it's gonna download pip, and then and if it runs pip, it's gonna download packages, those packages that you need. Now it seems complicated, um, I'm pretty sure it's doable within half an hour. It's not the hardest thing, it's just the hardest thing, the antivirus will stop you, the firewall will definitely stop you because it's a program. As soon as a program, obviously as soon as you, like, for example, connect your USB to your computer and you try to um, download a file or something, the firewall is going to definitely stop you unless you have a weak firewall, for example, a Windows Defender. <laughs> right, so I'll show you now how to, so basically all we need to do is uh, LS desktop. DIR, there we go, sorry. So CD desktop, as you as in desktop, DIR, where are we? We are in desktop, so CD Python. So basically going to do is go to your library, DIR, and there we go, right? So we need to run this command. Let me just get up. So pi installer and your file name. So my file name is what file name? IP grab. Now I'm gonna change it because it's there we go. Just change it. I install the pygrab. What the fuck am I talking about? Ipgrab. Dot. I. Dot Sorry, because the Python is dot py, and it should make a file. Now, what you can do, you can also run different uh, commands on this because all it's gonna do now is gonna create a big, big fucking program, like fifteen folders and fifteen, fifteen hundred files. Just for one program that has, uh, let me just check how much lines of code. It uh, has 16 lines of code. Not even that, it has 14. 14 lines of code. Now this make it take a minute. So let just this, let this run and it should not take that long. It should take a minute only. I will tell you when it's done. I'm gonna have a tea break now. I'll come back to you when it's done. I'll show you how it works. Okay, I pressed enter and it's done. Uh, now, why should be is there we go. Now, I might have fucked up because I think if you buy one file, uh, do the same thing, but we're gonna do one file. And now it should, what happen is it should sort of make one file instead of 15 fucking folders. Or I might be wrong. And uh, build. Yep. Uh, there we go. IP grab this should be an application. Let's check if it works. Hope it works. It's an application file, so it should work. 
There you go. So now obviously it doesn't sort of do anything, right? Because it's it it tracks your IP address and it closes the program shuts down itself, right? So Python. So now if we go to Python and we go DB, it should or give us a third display. Maybe it doesn't because I fucked up. Maybe. Oh, maybe maybe now it work. There we go. Maybe if I go to doesn't still doesn't. Interesting, interesting. There we go. Right there we go. So I'm because I'm an IT specialist. Uh, all you need to do is make sure that the program application is in the same file, the same directory, right, as it was before. Because if not, then you're gonna have to change the dependency or. Basically, what you can do is upgrade um, the actual file path. Then it doesn't matter because if you give it like what I mean by ultimate file path, for example, right? What you do is give this, right? You go to the folder, copy address as text. You go to your Visual Basic and you copy basically the file path like this. Because then, then it doesn't matter where it is. It will always find it. Now, the reason I do this is because it's just for me. It's quicker because I usually have my files tidy, right? So it doesn't for me. It doesn't make a difference. However. If you're writing your files and you don't know what you're exactly doing, I suggest you do this, right? Just make the ultimate file path and that will save you any hustle or any problems, right? So this will be it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed. If you can subscribe, leave a comment and give me a big kiss, I will be very happy. Um, if you have any problems, make sure to hit me in the comments. I'll try and explain stuff. I can give you some sort of explanations and stuff. Please don't message me if you can if I can help you with fucking homework or something. If you don't actually have a problem, right? Obviously I'm joking, right? If you have some problems, just message me. Um so hope you've enjoyed the video as I said. If you can subscribe, give me a kiss, and I'll see you in the next video. I don't know what the next video will be. I don't know. Maybe you guys want to see something. Make sure to tell me if you do. Anyways, love you.